It starts with companies looking at their ranks. It's, you know, it's public policy, it's public pressure, it's everything that needs to come together to change the state of the union that we're currently in because it's not sustainable. Despite recent statements denouncing racism and discrimination, investors and employees alike are putting pressure on big banks to walk the walk. This is Access All. Corporations have pledged more than $1.7 billion to champion equality in response to global demonstrations against racial injustice. Bank of America alone pledged $1 billion to address economic and racial inequality, the first big bank to vow monetary support. But at the second largest bank in America, black people held only 5% of 4,197 top-level roles last year, while Latino people held only 4%. These numbers are well below the two groups' proportion of the U.S. population, about 13% and 19%, respectively. I see all of these companies coming out with platitudes and, and you know, letters of solidarity to say, you know, we're standing next to, you know, our brothers and sisters. But then you look at the corporate ranks and, you know, it's predominantly white and male this is Natasha Lamb, a managing partner at activist investment firm Arjuna Capital. A goal of investors increasingly focused on social and governance issues is for companies to disclose racial diversity data. We're not only looking at the financial profile of companies, we're also looking at their environmental, social, and governance profiles. And in doing so, one of the big issues that we've been looking at is diversity or lack thereof in corporate ranks. A big point of focus for us has been pay equity and who are the people holding the highest paying jobs. U.S. firms with more than 100 employees already gather data on racial and gender diversity annually for the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. However, the data is confidential and companies are not required to publicly release it. Only 32 companies in the Russell 1000 Index make the information public, according to Just Capital. What we know is that transparency, that sunlight is the best disinfectant. And if you disclose, you know, your numbers and you and you acknowledge that there's a problem, there's something you can do about it. But you have to first say, this is an issue. And I think that has been hard for a lot of companies because they want to be seen as, you know, perfect allies in this fight towards racial and gender justice. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon recently released a statement with new diversity goals. By 2025, the firm wants 7% of its employees with the title vice president to be black and 9% Latino professionals. The bank also aims for 40% of its employees with this title to be women. Arjuna Capital has successfully pressed at least one Wall Street bank to disclose current race-related data via shareholder resolutions. Citigroup has published their median pay data broken down by gender and race for 2018 and 2019. This year, Citigroup said that women made 27% less than men on average, and minorities made 94% of the median pay for non-minorities. So we just learned this year, earlier in 2020, that Citigroup has narrowed the gender pay gap by two points. They've narrowed the minority pay gap by one point. And they're doing the work necessary to really, you know, reshuffle the deck so that there's greater equity and greater diversity in the workforce. Fixing that issue is not something that's gonna happen in a pay cycle. It's not gonna happen in a year, it's not gonna happen in two. It's gonna happen over a stretch of time because it's real change. It's not window dressing.